Hey guys, Jamie here from Start Right, and I'm here with Brendan from Counterparts. How's it going, man? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, just on the phone with our credit card company for the last half an hour, so uh, I'm ready to do an interview now. It's all good. Yeah, the, <laughs> You're ready, my, ready to talk some more. Yeah, exactly, yeah. No, but it's all good. Well, honestly, I was on hold, so I didn't get to do as much talking as I would like, but this is great. So You can get out your, uh, your pent-up energy. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, like, you, you know, just uh, any anger I have towards Visa, I can projecting on the uh, starter right crowd so so the reason you're here in the uk other than to tour and have fun yep. is uh you released your fifth album you're not yep. you anymore yeah absolutely. a few weeks ago on piano's records yep. people have been losing their shit over this album they, like, people yeah, have been really loving it yeah it's crazy like you know for for once we for once the record it has been like an immediate success mm -hmm. like i think that with every other record that we've done it's always been like the record comes out and then you know kids hear it and they're kind of like this is cool, but I like the old ones better. And then, you know, six months to a year go by, and then they're like, okay, actually, this is the best Counterparts record. But with You're Not You, seemingly it was like instant. Just like we put it out, and everybody's like, this is fucking sick. This is the best Counterparts record. So tight. And it was just, you know, for the first time in our career, we had like an immediate positive reaction, I guess. And it was like, you know, it was awesome. So very, very cool. The songs are going over live like crazy. Like everybody knows the words. It's, it's nice. Is it's that really even cool. even better to get that reaction because you have had like kind of a, a lineup change as well? Yeah, yeah, of of course, yeah, absolutely. You know, like there was there was definitely a lot of um, a lot of weirdness surrounding the band when you know with the member changes and a lot of people being like, you know, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like, are they gonna break up? Is the band over? Whatever. And we were kind of just like, I mean, we know we're like, no, like we're not gonna break up. We're just gonna keep writing better music and being a better band. Um, but to have everybody sort of confirm that and seeing people being like, okay. I feel like an idiot. I, you know, I was saying like counterparts is done there. It's over. And they come out and put up the best record of their career. And I'm like, yeah, like exactly. Like, just trust me. You know what I mean? Trust yeah, that, yeah, yeah. trust that we're going to put out good material because, you know, I don't want to put out shit with my name on it. You know, yeah. like I'm not, I'm not going to put out a bad record, uh, and let it, you know, soil our reputation or legacy or something like that. So with Blake coming over from obviously formerly of hundreds yep. as well, were, yeah, you, sure. were you kind of concerned about, like keeping that counterpart sound not like kind of straight into hundred territory. Um, I like maybe a bit at the beginning, but I think that um, the cool part about the member changes is that we have people that are, that came sort of like they're from an outside perspective, right? Like anybody that's not a, an original member, they're sort of coming from the outside and and sort of you know I think that for all of us because we've been doing it so long that counterparts has its own sound now. You know, like I think that we have our own. We have our own sound, like we know what a counterparts record sounds like, and we sort of know what fans of the band are expecting as well. So, you know, I don't think that there was any, you know, there wasn't really a point in in recording or writing where we looked around and we're kind of like, no, this sounds, you know, too much like a hundred song or this one, because, you know, we all kind of know, uh, even though we've, aside from me, even though like you know everyone else has come from past bands, it's like, well, this is the band that we're writing for now, and and you know this band has a significant sound, and we all have to. You know, we have to do our best to preserve it and, you know, po polish it and make it better. So I actually think it was, it, it, you know, it, it actually makes things easier because it's almost like, you know, we, we have creative control and we're able to sort of mold our art and, and add flair to it and try new things. But at the end of the day, if, if we have an idea or if we're going for something and we all sit around and we're kind of like, this isn't counterparts, like this isn't us, this is, you know, this is too much for us, then we all kind of know like, to agree and be like okay yeah you know what fair maybe maybe we should save that or you know or work on it later on so yeah it actually ended up being really cool the writing and all that stuff so you're the only original member of Count Parts yeah. still in the band do you yeah. think that if uh, if a situation ever came where you left the band would Count Parts cease to exist or could they go on without you um I don't really know like I it's funny I was having this conversation uh, on the way back from the coffee shop today I was just saying like in the event that I left it'd be like you know, if if I left and everybody else was like, well, we're going to get a different singer and we're going to carry on, there's not much, I, you know, there's not much I can do. Mm -hmm. I can't really, you know, I can't really say like, it's my band and I'm out, so it's over, yeah. you know, because, and a lot of people, a lot of people think that way, but, you know, it kind of, I don't really like when people underplay the value of all the other members and, you know, a lot of the times you hear people being like, well, Counterparts is just Brendan now. It's like, no, it, it's not, you know what I mean? Like, yes, I'm the only original member left, but everybody else that's involved now, like this is as much a, a part of their life as it is mine, you know? So while I, I think it, I think that it could happen. And I think that 
let's say I were to leave tomorrow, like I were to just wake up and be like, I'm good, I'm done with this, like never again. I think that they could carry on and be like, you know, and and it would, and I think that they could make cool music because you know they're all great musicians, like all the guys. But I think that the fan base, they may be the ones that are kind of just like, this is weird now. I don't really, I don't really fuck with this. Like this yeah, is yeah. different. So it kind of all depends on that, really. Yeah, but yeah. I'm honest to God, I'm probably not leaving. <laughs> And um, you mentioned that you've kind of <coughs> counterparts now have a really distinctive sound, which I yeah, definitely sure. agree with. And you you kind of refer to yourself a lot as a metalcore band, yeah, and then yeah. I see a lot of other people say melodic hardcore. And yeah, melodic I'd, hardcore, I'd hardcore say, metal. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Do you think you've always kind of been caught between scenes, like between genres? Oh yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I think that you know, I think that when we first started, I think our mindset was more like took more of a hardcore vibe like especially around like the current will carry us era and stuff like that whereas like in our minds we were kind of like well we're a hardcore band but we just have like metal parts and stuff like that you know what i mean but a lot of people like in hardcore were kind of like no you're not like you guys do this certain thing so that means you're not hardcore and whatever so i kind of just got fed up with it and was like all right like literally what does the word metalcore mean it means metal and hardcore so it's like that's us like we we're dead like on the on the fucking fence of you know depending on which way the wind blows we can be hardcore one day and metal metal the other day and and I think that it's really cool to be able to mix genres like that but you know when you do that the only drawback is that you know there's going to be parts that are you know too hardcore for the metal kids and too metal for the hardcore kids and you're going to kind of get that that clash between genres but I think that most people like 99% of people are going to be like oh, this is sick. Like, they actually, they do both things well. This is cool. But then, you know, that 1% of people that'll be, you know, like the Hell Yeah Brother metalheads may hear like a fast, uh, they may, may feel like hear like a more hardcore part and be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And vice versa. Um, but then again, you know, the 1% of people that don't fuck with the band, like, they're not really my concern anyway. Yeah. You know, I, I could I could care less if they like it or, or don't. You know, we have so many people that do obviously love the band and care about the band. So it's like, those are the people I'm catering towards, yeah. you know? And then obviously the new like new fans are nice and every time we do a tour we kind of gain more of a fan base and we gain more traction everywhere we go, which is awesome too, but yeah, if people don't like our band like it's not my job to convince them and be like, "No, please like just check this out. Like maybe you like this better." It's like, "Nah, fuck it, man. Listen to whatever you want to." You know, like I don't blame you. Uh I think I think Metalcore was perfected when a Mouse and the Magnum Heart came out, so yeah, whatever. Maybe we're in the same wavelength there, but <laughs> yeah and you you mentioned that this album's kind of had the immediate success you've maybe not had before yeah, do you yeah. think any of that was down to being on pure noise records obviously you released the last record on the on pure noise as well yeah i i think that um i think that pure noise definitely had it has it has its fan base more locked in and it understands its demographic a lot more than victory did you know what i mean like with victory i think that like you know while, while like everyone's heard the stories and, and all that shit and whatever but for us it was a cool label you know what I mean like they they helped us out they they signed us when literally nobody else wanted us like when when we you know after Profits came out like no, every other label was just like I'm not fucking touching this <laughs> but for whatever reason Victory were like yeah okay this is cool like you know let's see where it goes so I think it served its purpose for sure but I think that you know a label like that doesn't necessarily at least for us, I think that they had this idea of what counterparts should be or like the type of things that we should be doing and they just didn't really match with us and they didn't really match with with the way our fans feel. You know what I mean? Like we would be out with some bands and Victory would think it was a good move and then we would, you know, nobody would give a shit every night and it's kind of like, see, like you see what I mean? Like we know the people that we need to cater to and we know the people that aren't going to care and they don't really, they, I don't think that they really got that but that being said, they they were still like, well, whatever, we're still going to pay for your recording budget and, you know, get your work visas and, and uh, help you guys on the road and do all that stuff. So, you know, I, our experience wasn't bad at all. We just think that when the, when the contract came to an end and we were looking at what label we think we could do well and prosper on, like Pure Noise was the one that seemed to make the most sense. Mm. So, And you got out, which is very rare. We did, yeah. And, and, yeah, and honestly, it's it's very rare. I think that... You know, I think that, uh, and, and it was, you know, it was, it was pretty painless as well. Like, you know, without getting too, too in depth about it, like the time came and we were like, Hey, so our contract's over, so we're going to go. And they were just like, okay, 
whatever. Like, yeah, if you feel like you'll do better on another label, go ahead. And we were all like, like just waiting, like, are they going to put up a fight at all? Or, and they didn't. And it was just like, cool. Well, you know what? Like respect on that, on that end, because it's like, yeah, cool. Like that's awesome. You know, just always in fear of a lawsuit. For sure. Uh, For sure. Um, do you, are you feeling a bit more at home on pianos now that they're signing more heavy bands as well? Like they've got Knock Loose now, and yeah, Terror, yeah, sure. and yeah, Stone, Drug Church, and yeah, all those bands. Yeah, and yeah, yeah I, I I do feel like um, it definitely. I mean, when when we signed, I think they had um, I think they had like Stick to Your Guns and they had uh, Landscapes and yeah. and um, Rotting Out and some like some other heavy bands and stuff. But it is definitely cool because you know you don't you don't see it too too often where there's there is a cool mix of like the heavy uh, core aspect. And then they've got like, you know, they've got bands like state champs and, yeah. and story so far and, and you know, all that kind of stuff where it's like, you know, it, it's cool. Like they're kind of just, they have the board control almost if, if that makes sense. And I, th- I think that it's really cool because, you know, there's definitely cross marketing to, you know, that you'll experience, you know, there'll be kids that even now, like we, we did a tour with state champs a couple years ago and, when they like and it was funny like them playing under us thinking about that now is ridiculous but that's how it was back then and so they would play their set would be fucking nuts and nobody would leave everybody would just stand perfectly still while we set while we were setting up then we would start and the same kids would go nuts and it's just like you know i think that pure noise has a lot to do with that because people are just like this label is cool what they're doing is cool so if they have a band i'm probably gonna like it yeah. you know and i yeah, i think it's I think it's a really good home for us. We actually just re-signed to Pure Noise as our contract with with them was up after You're Not You. And we were just like, well, where the fuck else are we going to go? Yeah. Like, what other label is going to be as cool? Give us as much, you know, let us, give us as much resources to be the band that we have to be. Mm-hmm. And also just be cool people in general. We were like, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Like, we, we like, Jake hit us up and was like, yeah, so your, your deal's done. What do you want to do? We're like, Resign, <laughs> like you know, just give us a contract and we'll sign. We'll sign it again. He's like, all right, here it is. So, Sick. he played the same venue as Insane Clown Posse the other night. Yeah, last How night. Was yeah, that? exactly. It was. It was actually. It was really cool. Like the show, the show was awesome. Whenever we play Glasgow, it's always wild. Um, you know, so we we uh the show was the show was great. We um the one thing, so our set our sets overlapped unfortunately, but pretty much the second we were done. Tyler busted his hand open, so he was like all shot and bleeding. He's good now though. But uh, so uh, we were all kind of like, "Well, fuck it, we're gonna go, we're gonna go upstairs and catch a bit of the show." While Jonathan, the promoter, walks me upstairs, um, I'm in the room for like three seconds, and I just get hit with so much fago, <laughs> or, or like just, and it's all in my eye and shit. And I'm just like walking around like this, like, "Fuck, why did I do this?" But you know, the show, the show is cool. Um, you know, it's uh, I think. Like, because we were outside, we were hanging out and, uh, you know, but there was obviously a bunch of jugglers at the show and shit. And they were like, so cool to us. They were just like, so interested in what we were. They were asking, like, they'd never heard the band and they're like, oh, can we like buy CDs from you guys and stuff? Like they were just, they were so nice. And it's just like, this is sick. Like they're, I think they were one of the cooler, um, you know, they're like one of the cooler, uh, fan bases that any band can have, you know, like I wish, uh, I mean, you know. I don't like the only th- the only drawback is I don't like getting covered in soda. It's sticky yeah. and fucking stinks. But other than that, I think everything else about it's kind of cool. Like they're all really nice. So nice. show yeah, but their show was fucking nuts. Like the 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 root beer from the venue upstairs was leaking through the floor into our <laughs> venue. Like it was crazy. But nice. yeah. pick up the juggalos. Of course, hundred uh, percent. You're in Manchester tonight. Welcome yep. to our oh, fair yeah. city. Uh, it's, Love it. It's kind of raining as is custom here. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean it's okay. Uh, Manchester is one of the best cities in the UK for sure. In it's the, world, the uh, it's the uh, it's the fucking it's where the 1975 are from. So you know, obviously <laughs> we're uh, obviously we're very happy to be here. So. Is that the greatest band in the world you were yeah, talking 100%, about? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, you know that? So many other people are like, well, Oasis is here. I'm like, uh, is Matty Healy in Oasis? <laughs> or I, no, nah, they're. I mean. I, you can argue anything, but like they're they're probably my favorite band. So yeah. that's the one thing I I love about the city and Tack Coffee as well. We go there every time we're yeah, here. Nice. Great coffee place. So shows are always sick. Whether we're you know we play Sound Control a lot. It's our first time playing Rebellion, but mm-hmm. place is awesome. We don't O2 with Architects, but yeah, Manchester's sick. His parents are like minor celebrities in the UK. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, because I remember uh, when I was looking up about them, like uh, 
there was a lot of stuff about his mom being on Coronation Street, and that's yeah. every I think every woman in my family watches that show. Really? Like they all watch Coronation Street. Like it's I don't know if it's big in the U.S., but in Canada, um, it's huge. Like like uh, my grandma would watch it all throughout the week. It would be on in in the afternoon, and then my mom would watch it every Sunday, and it would be just one full episode. Yeah, the so, only yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, I know way way too much about that show. I didn't even know they got it in Canada. That's uh, great. I definitely know. I know a thing or two about Corey. That's for sure. So. Uh, it got announced yesterday that Warp Tour is now finishing. You guys were on Warp yeah. Tour this yep. year. Uh, the last year will be next year. Do you think yep. um, it's kind of a good time for it to stop? Um, I I do, I do, and I don't. I feel like it's. Yeah, it, it's difficult because, you know, obviously, obviously, like the nostalgia factor of Warp Tour and, and that kind of plays into a lot of it. And a lot of people are upset about it for sure. But, um, you know, just, just being on it last year, I mean, I sort of understand, you know, uh, you can't, you know, if, it, if a tour is not doing as well as it used to, or if, or if it, you know, if it's becoming a thing where it's like they're, they're constantly losing money every year, then like I, I wouldn't do it either. I'd be like, fuck no, I'm not, you know, we've lost money two, three years in a row. Like I'm not losing anymore. This is ridiculous. Like, well, so I do think that they're bowing out at the proper time. And I think that the, the timing they picked is good. And like, I can't wait to see the bands that they're going to have for it because I'm sure, you know, I'm sure after that announcement, a lot of other bands are going to come out of the woodwork and be like, Hey, you know, like I wouldn't be surprised if there was legacy bands, like, you know, like a My Chemical Romance or Fall Out Boy type thing that are going to come back and be like, well, this was sort of our first taste of success like in the first uh you know the first sort of fan base that that built us up to where we are now that i think it would be kind of cool to do it obviously you know i'm kind of, it's kind of reaching expecting my chemical romance to reunite and play but you know i think that we're there's going to be a lot of stuff when the lineup gets announced it's going to be like oh holy shit like yeah. they're actually coming back and they're going to do the tour like this is nuts so if they do i'm there I'm, yeah i mean yeah same like there's you know there's no I would have to go if the lineup's crazy. Like I have to go. So I'll go every day. Yeah. See, but you know, we we did enjoy our time on the tour and it was cool. So, um, yeah, you know, I think they're going out while while they're still on top and it's still uh, it's still the most talked about tour every year in the North America. I think so. You know, I I'm sure I'm sure there'll be something. I'm sure, you know, maybe maybe the scene's in a bit of a decline at the moment and there may be there may be time in the future for it to come back or something else to sort of take its place. And I think yeah. it, it's a matter of time before we see what, what it evolves into yeah. for sure. Okay. So it's no secret that you love a tweet. Of course. And, uh, Gu- guilty, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm going to do a uh, Twitter higher or lower. So I've got some of okay. your contemporaries, Twitter followers, Twitter followings. Okay. And you have to guess whether you have more followers okay. or less higher or lower. Okay. Let's do it. So, um, you are on, do you know how many followers you have? First of all, Yes, I think. I know ballpark. Ballpark, yeah. but seventeen thousand <coughs> roughly. Okay. Okay. That's seventeen thousand dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> and King Dumbass. I'm one. And King Dumbass leading the game, so. <laughs> so first one is uh Jesse from Six Year Guns. Higher or lower? Does he have lower followers than you? I think I think he has lower. I think he does. Correct. And, yeah, okay. Thirteen thousand. No, nothing, nothing against Jesse, but I think that uh I think that my uh i definitely use twitter way more than he does so i think that that plays into that role you know what i mean the more active you are the more people want to keep in touch but i mean jesse's a more more important person for sure he should should be skyrocketing he has a lot of cool things to say but Mm. gotta get on the pee pee poo poo jokes man that's (laughs) that's the only advice i have um your former touring mates who are playing here next week uh knocked loose higher or lower um the band I would think the band probably has more than me, personally. Yes, only just. Yeah. Okay. Eighteen and a half thousand. Okay. Yeah. Right. Damn, <laughs> Brenda Murphy World Tour with Knock Knock Loose direct support <laughs> coming soon. I'll do my stand up set and they'll do their thing. <laughs> uh, Adam from Architects. Ah oh, shit. I don't know. I honestly I don't see him tweet that often. I would say lower, but I may be mistaken. Correct. Yeah, okay. Six thousand. Yep. The man that signed you for your first record, Shane Told. Um, I don't know. That's tough. I think I want to say more, but yeah, I think he probably may have more. Yeah, let's yeah. say over twenty for him, right? Yeah, twenty-seven thousand. I'm killing it. This is my shit. Uh, George Petit. 
George Petit of is it Petit or Pettit? Uh, I think of, it's Pettit. Like some fire. Okay, yeah. Uh, Alex on fire. I will say lower because I think I think when Alex on fire was most active was a little bit before Twitter was such a huge thing. You are correct. Yep. Thirteen and a half thousand. Uh, Wade McNeil also of Alex on fire. Uh, he may have a bit more because I know he does like a lot of radio stuff in Toronto and. Um, yeah, he was like, like I said, he was singing in like Gallows for a bit and everything. So I think he has more. Am I right? Yeah, twenty three and a half. Okay. You're very, very good at this. Yeah, I'm nailing it. It's all, <laughs> it's all stored in my stupid brain. Um, expire the band. R.I.P. Um, I don't know. I want to say. I would. I would think it would be more, but I think I'm gonna say lower. Ooh, it's a uh, it's is it, higher, higher? <laughs> twenty one thousand. Cool, because I was gonna say I I would I would like to think that they had more, but I don't know if uh, you know again like they I don't know if uh, they were as active on Twitter as as some other bands were, but yeah I mean there you go I got one wrong shout out expire sorry for doubting you Zach and finally oh finally one of your influences Shy Halud. Um, I want to say then me personally. Yeah. I again, I'm gonna say lower just because when they were, I think, most active was like was way before Twitter. I think it was like before, it was like MySpace or, or earlier. Am I correct? Lower? Okay, yeah, cool. yeah. Yep. Twelve and a half thousand. Cool. Right, right, you well, were very, very good one, at that. Game. One wrong. Yeah. I nailed it. That's all good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks so much for being oh, yeah. here. Dude, no problem. I'm Thank stoked you for, for the show. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. It sounds awesome. Should be good. Wait. Thanks so much for being here. Awesome. Check Thank out you. You're Not You anymore if you've not already. I'm sure you have. Please do. And uh, subscribe to Start Riot. Like the video. Comment below. What's your favorite counterpart song? Let's What's your favorite Brendan Murphy tweet? Yeah, yeah, let me know, let me know. And I'll we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Nice one, oh, thanks, yeah. man. Dude, thanks so yeah, much. that was really cool. Yeah.